Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another episode of my art journal process. Okay, so here's my kitchen counter and I have some of the stuff I bought from grocery shopping today. I bought a cauliflower and some mini donuts and some apple fruit sticks. Oreo, so I um, now it's coffee time. I'm gonna have some mini donuts and these apple sticks and I'll do some sketches in my art journal. Okay, so here's my coffee and snack. These are just ordinary stuff. They're not so aesthetically appealing, but it's part of my life and I will have to record it in my art journal. So I always draw directly with my pen. I kind of visualize the size first with hand gestures. And now I'm just starting drawing this donut, not being covered by anything else on top of the plate. And then this part of the donut and then this apple stick right here, covering the donut on the left hand side, adding the details and the textures that I see, that I observe, trusting what I see. I know the lines on there are pretty random, but it's what they are on the surface. Using a lot of broken lines because uh, for cakes and cookies and other food items, the surface textures can be really loose. Just adding this dish underneath everything. The rim. Now I'm just drawing my coffee cup, starting with the top, the opening. Connect, just connecting the opening with the handle and then the body, the rim. Switching to a 0 0.6 fine liner pen to add some hatchings to suggest the three dimension. using broken lines to show the sprinkles of sugar and cinnamon on these mini donuts. Add a bit of hatching for these apple sticks. Okay, so now I'm gonna paint watercolors to bring these to life. So wet it the area first with clear water. First layer is always the lightest. It's a mix of yellow ochre and yellow or orange, very watery. First layer, just keep it watery for watercolors. Paint the coffee, mix of brown, and a darker layer of brown to show the, uh, the shiny surface. This is a mix of orange and brown for the second layer. It's pretty much wet on wet. So the colors blend together very loosely. For the color of these mini donuts, it's more of a dense brown and orange with more paint pigment and less water. Also, I'm using broken brush strokes, very thin dotting brush strokes to suggest the surface texture because there are a lot of sugar and cinnamon covering these, the surface. Medium brown for the next layer of these apple sticks adding these darker colors where I observe. An even darker brown by mixing in a tiny bit of ultramarine blue to darken the brown for this next layer. Again, using my observation skills to know where I should put the darker colors. Same for these mini donuts. Again, keep using broken lines and leaving tiny tiny bits of uh, shiny white spots to suggest sugar. Now I'm going to paint my white cup, just wet the area first with water, and then mix my own gray with blue and purple and green. Because this bluish gray is more lively than using black 
and water. It's painting this uh, turquoise color dish with brown rim, leaving tiny bit of highlights around the rim. We got this ceramic. Okay, so now just adding shadows for the cup and the dish. Again, my, I mix my own gray by mixing blue and green and purple together. Wet on wet with two layers, darker around the edge. Okay, so here's my finished sketch. Took me, up, took me about 17 minutes. It's quite a lot of renderings to do for these little sweets here. Okay, so now I will sketch this cauliflower. So basically, before I start sketching, I like to visualize it or to simplify what I see. So basically, I see this cauliflower as a pretty complex circular shape. And then inside this circular shape, I see smaller circular shapes or clusters, like this one here, larger ones like this, circular clusters, one beside another, hugging each other like this, and then these green leaves right outside, wrapping this circular form. So again, I kind of visualize the size, the general size first on the blank space, and now I'm starting to draw this complex outline. It's not that complex once I know the different steps I need to do for drawing. After drawing the general outline, I'm moving inside to draw the clusters, connecting one cluster after another before adding too much um, inner details. I just I'm now I'm just drawing the larger clusters, like doing jigsaw puzzles. Some are big, some are um, small. And these shapes are very organic. The whole process is really meditative and calming. Again, we don't have to be 100% accurate to, to place every single cluster at the right place. There might be a little bit of displacement and I'm okay with that. It's not gonna be 100% perfect. Okay, so now switching to a thinner fine liner, I'm just adding those inside details was broken lines, tiny little round broken lines. Again, this is very calming because I already have the uh, general and then the medium outlines laid out first. These details are much more easier to manage and to do. Okay, then drawing the main body of the cauliflower, starting to draw the organic shapes of these leaves. Again, trusting what I see instead of drawing what those things should be. It's pretty important in the drawing process. You have to follow my observation instead of having too much bias of what I see. Okay, very random shapes, very abstract. And I like the way that the bit of this cauliflower is outside the frame of my art journal. I kind of do that sometimes with my sketches intentionally, just to create a more natural and dramatic composition instead of feeling everything inside the page. It's okay to have something outside the page a bit. So wetting the area first with clear water before I put paint on, it's a nice way to not make the first layer way too solid. So the, cloud, so the uh, cauliflower has the color of a very, very light tone of yellow. And then this is the first layer for the leaves mix of a uh, radiant green and yellow. 
Okay. And then wet on wet. A medium green. Meridian green mixed with yellow ochre. Tiny bit of brown, depending on the shade. Just play around with mixing. Okay, so now I think the cauliflower head is dried. I'm just adding a bit of shade. So the shade of yellow has a um, bit of blue in it. So I mix a tiny bit of ultramarine blue into the original yellow color. Add these dark lines and dots according to my observation. Again, this is quite watery. Then another layer, a darker green for the leaves. The parts that is um, you know in the shadow of the flower head. So I mix more ultramarine blue and a bit of brown into the original green. Okay, and adding another layer of shade for the flower head, especially around the gaps between the large clusters. It's a bit darker. And now it looks even more three-dimensional. Sometimes we have to follow color theory. The shade of yellow is just uh, by mixing in a bit of blue. And just trust the process. Just adding the shadow by mixing my own gray, mixing purple and blue together, wet on wet even darker around the bottom. And here is my art journal page. There's just one teeny little space over here that I need to fill. I'm probably gonna maybe just fill, fill this space with the uh, sunset sky outside my window in the uh, next one or two hours. Okay, so now it is about 9.15 p.m. And the evening sky is nice and warm with a blue mountain in the distance. I'm just going to do a quick sketch to fill that tiny space on the upper corner. Okay, so I am drawing a frame around the cauliflower just to make the composition more organized. I've been drawing this view numerous times over the years and recently too. So I'm just really familiar with all the house structures and trees. Drawing really quickly and not worrying about accuracy. So I started with the cone-shaped tree on the left-hand side and just connecting the rest of the uh, elements, the houses and rooftops on the right-hand side. Adding more tree shapes, just seeing large shapes. Adding very loose details, the essence. Okay, and ready to paint. The drawing part took me just four minutes. I love painting skies. So it's wet on wet, blend of light orange and magenta and blue, a bit of purple underneath. Painting the road with leftover gray. Light green and medium green for the trees, wet on wet, super loose. Loose and playful. Darker green. So when painting trees, I like to use choppy brushstrokes just to suggest the textures. Quickly painting the houses there in the distance. Blue Mountain. Final shade for the trees using dots. Okay, so here is my finished sketchbook spread. As you can see, I'm trying to make the uh, composition more interesting with um, overlapping or juxtaposition of the elements. I have this huge cauliflower here on the foreground and I have this scenery behind. So it's, it's more composition than just sketching them separately. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. If you have, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And um, 
subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you next time very soon. Have a great day.